your last. It will not be my last. It will not be our last. In the name of Jesus. Each time we come to the presence of God, I like us to know that that is the best place you can be at any time. The presence of God is the best place you can be at any time. If you see anyone who doesn't take delight in coming to the presence of God, that person doesn't understand what he or she is missing. For the Bible says in his presence is fullness of joy. After fullness, what remains? <laughs> In his presence is the fullness of joy and at his right hand are pleasures forever. Yes, in this world, at different places, there may be pleasures. You may find pleasures in every other thing, in many other things. But there is no forever in the pleasure of the world. But the Bible says in the presence of God is fullness of joy and at his right hand are pleasures forever. That forever is what makes the difference. That is eternal pleasure. Eternal pleasure. So when we come to God's presence, I like us to know what we're here to do. I like us to understand why we're here and be expectant in our heart and know that God means everything he says and he says everything he means. So we have come to his presence again today and we have started coming to the presence of God in this sanctuary since the first day of this month during the covenant service and the lord confronted us with the theme el bethel the god of bethel the god of bethel is the god who undoes every situation the god of bethel is god who removes distress and replaces it with with rest the god of bethel is the god who blesses the god of bethel is the god who delivers so we have come to the god of bethel and I pray that it will do us well. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, This God, whom we have come to seek, will do us well. Therefore, cheer up because he's here. Hallelujah. We will continue with our theme interpretation today. We have been on this for the past three Sundays. Today is the fourth Sunday. And of course, we are going to be looking at the part four of our theme interpretation today. We are still on the topic next level. And our texts have been from Luke chapter 8 verse 22 and Mark chapter 4 verse 35. The Bible says in Luke 8 22 that we have read that one day Jesus says to his disciples, let us go over to the other side of the lake. So they got into a boat and set out. We have trashed that and God has helped us to have the understanding of what next level means. We have also looked at some things about where God wants us to be intentional in moving to the next level. We have also seen the dividends of moving to the next level. But precisely for the past two Sundays, we have been emphasizing the issue of going deep in order for us to go tall. If any man goes tall in the spirit, but the person doesn't go deep, that person is not original. The originality of spiritual tallness is in how deep you are able to go. Anything that is tall, anyone that is tall or claims to be tall but not deep in the spirit is just living a life of mere decoration. And you know that religiosity and spirituality are not classmates. Somebody can be so religious that people are seeing you here and there doing everything. You can read the Bible. You can go out and preach the gospel. You can be a preacher. You can fast. If they are saying come and fast for 40 days and 40 nights, you are there. You can quote the pages or the text of the scriptures. But if you are not deep, 
If it is just about what you say and what you do, if it is not about the relationship you maintain with the master, it is about nothing. I told a class that I've been teaching the mentoring class that in our secondary school days we read a book, Much Ado About Nothing. You know, sometimes when some of my friends or some people at that time, when they wanted to read that, uh, when they wanted to uh, mention the, the title of that book, I mean, jokingly, they will say, much ado about nothing. And it is not ado, but it just spells the same way, A-D-O. It's much anxieties, stress, moving here and there about nothing. Just like matter. When Jesus visited the house of Lazarus, he met two sisters of Lazarus. One cared so much about doing hospitality. But one cared so much about sitting down to listen to the master. Because she knows that if she could feed well, she would be able to attend to him very well. But Martha was busy cooking, whining, dining, preparing. And when she consulted Jesus, telling him, Master, you are just there. Look at my sister sitting down. She's not even coming to the kitchen to help me. Won't you say something? And Jesus said, I will say something. And that's something I'm going to say is that, Martha, you have been encumbered with so many things so many things so many things but only one thing is necessary only one thing is vital only one thing is prime only one thing is at the center of what you become for me in me and with me and Mary has chosen that and that which Mary has chosen no one can take it away from her how I wish that when you come for worship, how I wish that when you claim to be a Christian, you will not major in minor and minor in major. How I wish that you and I, we get that one thing. And when we get that one thing, it will shed light upon every other thing that has to do with our lives. A relationship with God, a relationship with people, because you cannot get that one thing and not get it right. And that is that that one thing is what we care about that we have been talking about for the past two Sundays. That one thing is your relationship with God. This year, it's good to prosper and move to the next level in terms of finance. It's good to move to the next level in the aspect of yeah, accumulation of many other physical possessions, money, cars, houses, promotion, additional certificates, and all that. Sometimes when we are quantifying how, how fast, how prosperous, how progressive someone is moving, we tend to count so much those physical or material things that people are accumulating. Good, they are fine. They are things that will beautify us and make life comfortable and convenient for us and make people to know that yes this one is moving on all those ones are good but I told you don't forget I told you why it is important for you not to dwell so much on those areas alone at the neglect or the expense of moving forward in the aspect of your relationship with God I said all those things can make you to grow tall but what will make you to go deep is your relationship with God I told you that all those things can make you feel good but what will make you to be real good is your relationship with God so the most important thing that Mary has chosen is what we have come to church to choose is what we must choose every day as we run the race of life if I am reading my Bible through I am not reading my Bible through so that at the end of the year they can call me to come outside and collect gifts if I am reading my Bible through, I am reading my Bible through because I want to get that one thing that Mary got. If I am coming to church, I am making myself available for service. I am not making myself available for service because of the accolades of the pastor or the leadership of the church. I am doing that because I want to get that one thing that Mary got. 
If I am in the ministry, I am preaching, I am studying my Bible, preparing to teach people. I am not doing that because I want to be able to be eloquent and have a, an excellent delivery when I come to church. I am doing that because I want to get that one thing that Mary got. Every one of us run after that one thing. If you are not targeting that one thing, you are targeting nothing. May I tell you, friends, in this year 2024, look at the world now. Look at the world. You will see that things are getting more terrible. Look at the world now. See what is happening all around you. You discover that it seems as if this, this problems of the world keeps increasing on a daily basis. How, can, how are we going to be able to survive this outside and without him? Mary got that one thing and you will get it too. Amen. I didn't hear your amen. amen. I said you will get it. Amen. I will get it. Amen. But it doesn't come accidentally. Mary chose to get that one thing. How did she get it? She sat down at the feet of Jesus. When her sister was running around, sometimes when I read that place, I asked myself, did Jesus not care about courtesy? <laughs> yes, he cared about courtesy. But first thing first. That's why in our institution, there are courses that they call major courses. You know the credit hours of those courses will be different from that of minor courses. If you are studying engineering, a course like use of English is a minor course. If you are going to do it in our institution, if you are neglecting mathematical engineering, one of the courses that you are supposed to study, and you concentrate so much reading every day use of English, and you fail use of English, you fail mathematics engineering, and you pass use of English, or you have E in mathematics and engineering and you have A in use of English. You have passed the both courses but your CGPA will do what? You come down. Turn to your neighbor. You will not fail. God wants each of us to be intentional about our walk with him this year. The Bible says in the two passages that we have read, I'm going to juxtapose the two, place them side by side, so we'll see, use one to interpret the other. In Luke chapter 8, verse 22, the Bible says one day Jesus said to his disciples, let's go over to the other side of the lake. So they got into a boat and set out. That was all the Bible tells us according to the account of Luke about how the disciples of Jesus responded to his instructions or his move. But God's word in the book of Mark chapter 4 verse 35 verses 35 and 36 made us to realize how they moved. The Bible says that day when evening came he said to his disciples let us go over to the other side verse 36 leaving the crowd behind they took him along just as he was in the boat there were also other boats with them in those passages we have seen three ways three things that we need to do in order to go deep in the Lord, in order to move to the next level in our spiritual life, in order to get that which Mary got. The excellence, spiritual excellence that Mary got, the proximity with Jesus that Mary got, the divine instruction that Mary got, the divine upliftment that Mary got, the movement to the next level spiritually that Mary got, 
how do we get them to how did we get that to what do we need to do what do we need to understand if you and I have decided now that it is a big deal for us to grow deep in the Lord. If you and I have discovered now and we have all agreed that one principal thing that we cannot afford to look away from and make heaven as at last is our, our, our commitment to growing and moving to the next level in our spiritual lives first. If we have all agreed to that. What are the three things that we need to do? Because when Jesus informed his disciples, let us move to the other side of the lake, they did those three things. Number one. Number one. In Luke chapter 8, verse 22, the Bible says, when Jesus told them, let us move to the other side of the lake. They got into a boat and they set out. That made us to realize that they had the voice of the Lord. Number one thing that you need to do, that you need to work on, is to hear the voice of the Lord. To hear the voice of the Lord. To hear the voice of the Lord. Everything that it's going to take you to hear the voice of the Lord this year, please do it. Every biblical thing that it will take you to hear the voice of the Lord this year, please do it. Everything that will stop you or hinder you from hearing the voice of the Lord or from making yourself available to hear the voice of the Lord this year, please quit it. Everything that will make you to hear the voice of the Lord this year, please do it. Everything that will hinder you from hearing the voice of the Lord this year, please quit it. There are some things you need to quit. There are some things you need to do. Anyone who is going to go deep and move to the next level spiritually must make himself or herself available to hear the voice of the Lord. To hear the voice of the Lord. Jesus said, I know my sheep and my sheep know me. They hear my voice. One of the characteristics of the sheep of Christ Jesus, of those who intend to be his sheep, is that they make themselves available to hear his voice. John chapter 10, verse 27. This is the way the NIV puts it. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. My sheep listen to my voice. It means those who want to go deep and move to the next level in their spiritual lives must endeavor to hear the voice of the Lord. Make yourselves available for hearing the voice of the Lord. Make yourselves available for listening to the voice of the Lord. I like all those who are following us online, especially those who live outside the shores of Africa. I know how challenging it could be for you to be in church to worship. But if you are going to miss or lose dollars, if you are going to miss or lose pastelling, if you're going to lose or miss getting more heroes, please do so that you can hear his voice. What will sustain you in that nation where you are is the voice of the Lord. Because the voice of the Lord is what created the world that you exist in. It is that voice of the Lord that can sustain you. I am not saying you should go and sit down in church or be available reading the Bible all through and don't go to your offices or to your duty posts. How will you pay your bills? But I beg you, do everything that's going to take you to keep hearing, listening to the voice of the Lord. I have told you, I've said it several times, even including some of us who are in Africa, some of us who are in Ado here. Make it a matter of duty, priority, to listen to the voice of the Lord. If you are too busy to read the Bible, the um, ad copy, please get audio Bible. You can be in your office, put your earpiece, 
Listen to audio Bible. One chapter, two chapters in a day. That's a divine and spiritual medication that can keep you moving on. That's a spiritual food supplement. Take it every day and see how beautiful your spiritual life looks like. See how healthy your spiritual life will look like. Listen to the voice of the Lord. Yeah, people will say the primary voice of the Lord, the secondary voice of the Lord, but I don't differentiate between the two. Some will say the primary voice of the Lord is the audible voice that you hear or the revelation that you see or the trance that you see. But I will say the primary voice of the Lord is the scriptures. Sanctify them by your word for your word is truth. The Bible, the Bible, the Bible, the Bible. Any revelation that is not in tandem with the Bible is useless. Throw it away. If anybody is claiming God gave me a revelation and the person is claiming to be a prophet or claiming to be an evangelist or a pastor like one that one of my student pastors was sharing with us yesterday. That a pastor invited a guest minister to a church, a Baptist church, and he said he had a revelation that everybody should buy earthenware pots. You know this pot, Ikokuamo. You know this local pot. And when you are coming to church for the revival of tomorrow, Write all your problems and put it inside that pot. And you will see how God will move in a mighty way. Hallelujah. And people came to church, you know how naive some Baptist people can be. May we not host strangers in this church. So that the pot will not mix up. Put your own name on the pot. Put your own name on the pot. But it's your problems that you put inside the pot. <laughs> and all of them brought their pots to church. And after the so-called man of God had prayed on the pot. Inside the church. Right there. Inside the church auditorium. You will now lift up your pot with all the problems. After lifting it up to God and praying over them. You will now drop the pot or splash the pot on the ground. And the pot will scatter. And that means your problem has scattered. In theology, we call that one syncretism. And what happened next? People started dying one after the other in that church. I know my sheep. My sheep listen to me. My sheep listen to me. My sheep hear me. You want to grow deep so that you'll be able to stand tall when the storms of life blow, when the winds of life blow, you'll be able to stand tall. Yet it may bow your head, but it doesn't bow your heart. You see several trees, including palm tree, very tall, the ones that have been in existence for more than 100 years. When winds blow, they go like this, but they still come back and stand. Why? Because they are deeply rooted. Paul said we were pressed right, left, and center. We were, deep, we, were, we were pressed, but we were not depressed. We were trashed, but we don't give up. Why? Because we are deep. We are deep. We listen to him. I beg you, this year, don't miss church. I have seen that so many people only come on Sundays. It's good as you have come on Sunday. You have come on Sunday, fine. Thank you for coming on Sundays. I am very grateful to have you to host you on Sundays. But do you know that we have midweek services too? Where we study the Bible, where we confront one another with the truth of the scriptures, where we pray and raise one another up before the Lord. Do you know, are you aware that there is a mid midweek service in this assembly? Do you know that we meet on Wednesdays at 5 o'clock? Are you aware of that? Where do you go? If you cannot come, do you follow online? Do you think this Sunday, Sunday, hearing the voice of God can sustain you? Unfortunately, some of you don't even read your Bibles. And 
you want to make heaven? And you want to go deep? And you want to move to the next level? Listen to me. I know that if we are saying, okay, next week we want to organize special f- fasting, seven days, everybody come, you will come. Because you want to pray. See how, how the auditorium used to be filled up when we're having 21 days fasting and prayer. I ask myself, God, this is not the kind of a church I desire. I, I, don't, I don't like a group of people who take so much delight in fasting and prayer. Go, ah, taquology. You know, when we were in our university days, we used to do something that we used to call taquology. How many people know taquology? Taquology is taquosolono, lono. You sit down. You talk about it. I mean, you couldn't be. Be praying and praying and praying. You may be there for two days, praying, praying, praying. God, if you don't say to it, I'm not leaving this place. All those ones are good too. But those ones cannot take you to heaven. You see, we are talking about big deal. Real thing. Hearing the voice of the Lord. That's what will make you to go deep. Going deep. The truth is scarce in the contemporary church. And the Bible says, buy the truth and sell it not. What will make us to stand? What will make us to be firm? What will make us to be deeply rooted? His, what we hear. It has been discovered that a man is a product of what he hears. Hear someone call you a fool every day, you become foolish. What do you hear? So, some people who don't listen to sermons, who don't come to church, who don't do Bible study, they cannot miss a rice news. They cannot miss Biodo Kayadu. You know every station, you even call in. As if you are the president of Nigeria. As if the president is hearing what you are saying. What's your problem? The real one you have neglected. How many times have you bought data because you want to follow the program of the church because you will not be around? Well, you can buy data to call into a program that is not your home business. You don't miss news. You don't read your Bible, but you cannot miss reading newspaper. Let's see what Nigeria is saying again today. Excuse me? I listen to news. I read newspaper every day, except when I don't have the time. I check through news highlights online every day except when I don't have the time and I don't make it compulsory for myself but I must read my Bible every day not because I want to preach excuse me is it possible for you to decide this year and I want to listen to God every day oh my it's sweet to hear him The Bible says, Jesus said, let us move to the other side of the lake. And they set out. It means they had him. They were intentional about hearing him. Of course, there were so many people around them. The Bible just mentioned the multitudes. Several people could have hindered them from hearing him. But they resolved that we're going to hear him. There are several voices. You just tune in to the one you want to hear. <laughs> voices. Speak. Voice of discouragement speak around you. Voice of sin speak around you. Voice of destruction speaks around you. There are voices all around us, just like radio channels. When you have a radio, a transistor, and you tune it in, first of all, you'll be meowing. That's also a voice. Do noisy. But you now begin to tune it to the one you want to really hear. That's how, it, that's how it works. That's how it runs. 
It's God I want to hear. I don't want to hear this discouraging information about the economy of the nation. If you are hearing that, ah, they have killed 100 people in that place again today. If that, it's good to be updated, but it's cold. If you don't hear God, you will not be able to balance it up. It can create unnecessary fear in you, anxiety, and depression. Hey, dollar has jumped again. No, 1,500 now. Ah, shut down. What's your home problem? When you have had the voice of God, you have balanced it up. I'm telling you, even if it is going up, you are getting more deeply rooted to be able to withstand those challenges, knowing fully well that whatever happens in Nigeria, my own economy and bank is with God. He will take care of me at all times. It is when you are deep in God that you have that understanding. That's how it runs. Be intentional about hearing his voice. And how do you hear his voice? You hear his voice through the Bible, the word of God. How do you hear his voice? You hear his voice through his servants. What you are doing now is that you are hearing the voice of God from the mouth of a man. Because this is being spoken out of the revelation of God's word. You may not hear the audible voice of God, but the voice of God is in the Logos, the Bible that you are carrying. The voice of God is in the Rima, the revelation that you are getting from what you are hearing and what you read. The voice of God is also in the atmosphere. Circumstances speak for God to you. The voice of God is everywhere. The Bible says in Psalm 95, 6 and 7, Psalm 95. I like all of us to open our Bibles to that Psalm 95, verses 6 and 7. We read 6, 7, and 8. All of us, we chorus it together. Psalm 95, 6 down to 8. Everybody, let's go now. Come. Let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord our maker. For he is our God. And we are the people of his pasture. The flock under his care. The last part. Today, if you hear his voice, verse 8. Do not add in your heart as you did at Meribah. As you did that day at Massah in the desert. Verse 9. Let's read 9. Where your fathers tested and tried me. Though they had seen what I did. How many of us have experienced the goodness of God right from the beginning of this year? Don't let me say since you were born. This year, from January till now, how many of us have experienced the goodness of God? Shout hallelujah. Are you sure? If you are sure, say I am here. I may be tempted to call 10 people to come and tell me the goodness of God that you have experienced. If you have experienced the goodness of God this year, say I am here. Oh, that's great. The Bible says those who have seen what the Lord has done should not add in their heart when they hear the Lord. And I start asking myself, what is the difference between the hear and the heart? Because it is with the hear that you hear. And it now says, do not add in your heart. What's the business of the heart in the hear? What's the connection between the two? I hear with my ear now. What happens to my heart? What the word of God is making us to understand in that place is that there is a way you can hear something and you not put it into practice. You know, there is this folklore about, about goats. The belief of the Yorubas is that a goat is a very extremely disobedient animal. When we were in primary school, we were taught ere wure jeran ile to manji ya pupo nitori aigboran re. For the advantage of non Yoruba speakers, a goat is a domestic animal that people used to beat a lot because of its disobedience. If you beat a goat now, the moment the goat did something like this, flap the ears like this, it's still coming back to where you have beaten it. And I 
I start asking myself, what's the word of God now saying? When, when the Bible says, when the judge now returns, he's going to separate between the goats and the sheep. And I asked myself, can there be goats among those who are sitting before the Lord? Can there be goats in the church? When he says when he returns, he's going to separate between the goats. He will put the goats on the left and the sheep on the right. Ah. And I said, no, God, there's no goats in First Baptist Church. I do it. Everybody is a sheep. Am I correct? I'm not hearing you. A goat will hear with the ears, but will not enter the heart. As the goat is hearing the voice of the Lord, the goat will be saying, I beg, say what you want to say. Yeah, they go. A goat will hear the voice of the Lord and drop it in the church. Pastor, thank you. Here is your thing, no? Yeah, they go do my own thing. They are not in this church. But the sheep will hear with the ears and it will penetrate the heart. Wonderful. So, when we hear the voice of God, we are going deep. Make every opportunity, create consciously, intentionally, every opportunity to hear the voice of God this year. If you read the Bible and you don't understand it, the essence of the church is for fellowship. Ask someone who does. If there is no one who understands what you have read, please come and ask me. I am not a custodian of revelation, but I will explain to you the little I know too about where you have read and you don't understand. If you cannot come, send me a message. I will sit down, type it, and send it back to you. My ministration does not end on Sundays. It is round the clock. Why? Because we must go deep. Oh, how beautiful, how loving, how great a church could be if members of that church are going deep in the Lord, deeply rooted in the Lord. There will be no side talks. If there are, they will be few. There will be no problems. There will be no crisis. There will be no dryness. There will be no struggle in doing the ministry. There will be no suspicions. There will be love because we are all growing deep. We are loving the Lord, knowing the Lord together. How peaceful will you be if you are hearing the Lord? The voice of the Lord. They heard the voice of the Lord. So for you to go deep and move to the next level spiritually, please resolve to hear the voice of the Lord. Don't let it end after the summer. Wait for Sunday school. Wait for Sunday school. Wait for Sunday school. Listen to God also during Sunday school. As I'm preaching now, you cannot raise your hand and ask questions. Except if I am teaching. And it is an interactive teaching. But during Sunday school class, you can sit down, listen to your teacher, listen to God through the mouth of your teacher, ask questions. Make contributions. That's one of the ways to grow. Spiritual interactions. Fellowship. And number two thing. So the same thing written in Psalm 95, 5 and 7 was quoted in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 27. Hebrews chapter 3, sorry, verse 7. Hebrews 3, verse 7. We don't need to read that passage because of the constraints of time. We have the same thing there. And number two thing. After hearing the voice of the Lord, 
hearken to the voice of the Lord. Of course, I've mentioned that in the course of talking about hearing the voice of the Lord. Hearken to the voice of God. That is, obey that voice of God. Listen to that voice of God. And don't add in your heart. Just like the Bible says, when you hear the voice of God, don't add in your heart. Just like your fathers did. Talking about the people of Israel, their forefathers, you know that the generation that left, left Egypt for the promised land was not the generation that got there. Within 40 years, all of them died except two. Who and who? Joshua and Caleb. Others, as many as they were, they died in the wilderness. Because they had God. They saw what God did. Imagine, imagine someone saw the Red Sea. I've been opportune to see the Red Sea once. When I was on pilgrimage to Israel. Once. And I started asking myself, how did this sea part it into two? If someone saw the sea that is as big as that parted into two and walk on the dry ground at the center of the sea. It's not that they reported it to you. You saw it with your eyes like this. If someone saw quails coming in their multitudes, flying all around, sitting there waiting for you to kill them. How many of you have raised quails before? <laughs> or you have read about quails before? How fast does quail used to be? <laughs> if you keep quail, you keep quail in a cage. If you are not careful, you will miss all of them. Because once they escape, like, boom, they are gone. And quails waited for the people of Israel. They waited. Uh -huh. Something must have happened to them. They waited. And they were going there. You take this quail, take this one, take this one. As if they were flowers. That, they, that you would just pluck. And quails will wait for you. They saw that with their korokoro eyes. They saw what they call, what is this? The meaning of manna is what is this? That is the meaning of manna. What is this? They saw manna, food that they had never eaten before, that they had never seen before. And manna, according to the discoveries of the archaeologists, manna is a complete balanced diet. It has everything you need in a food. Water, carbo um, uh, carbohydrates, protein, fats, and oil, and all that. It has vitamins, everything inside one food. These people ate what is this? They saw it fell down. They took it, ate it. These people saw how God used, how God used frogs. To send Pharaoh out of the palace. Frogs. Frogs that will humanly, if you if 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 frog sees you, a frog will want to jump and escape. Frogs in their millions or trillions invaded the palace of Pharaoh, sent Pharaoh out, brought discomfort to the palace of Pharaoh. People were running around. It filled their houses, inside their pots, inside their kettles, inside everything. Frogs everywhere. And Pharaoh said, this one is too much. Please come and take your people and go. God used the Nauri, flee, to afflict a storm. These people saw all this, yet they had in their heart. What have you seen God do for you this year? Last year, times when it was as though you would die. When you were confronted with death, literally. Those years when it was as though you would not become somebody important in life. Those times when you were so sick that you were being carried from one hospital to another and you escaped it. And you are alive today. When you were stranded and was no food for you to eat and God fed you and today God is using you to feed people. What have you not seen about God? What of his goodness? What 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 part of his goodness have you not experienced? You think it's ordinary for someone to sleep and wake up the following day alive? What have you not experienced about God? What of forgiveness of sins? If you have seen all this, and you still hear the voice of God, and you hide in your heart, 
It is not correct. And how are we going to know that you have opened your heart and not hardened your heart by putting into practice what you are hearing in church or in the presence of God? That's the way we will know that you don't harden your heart. If you are hearing the voice of God, you are coming to church, you are working for God, you are doing this and that, and we still hear that you still carry ladies, you are a married man, you still carry all those small, small guests in skirts. Sometimes when I hear some ridiculous things, the church people, someone is coming to church, you still smoke. That you come to church, you still do drugs. What's the what's the correlation? You come to church, you still you still involve in rituals. You come to church, you still do Yahoo. You come to church, you still do pornography. Then it means you have hardened your heart. And once you had your once you harden your heart, nothing good can be added to you. Today, not tomorrow, today, if you hear his voice, do not add in your heart. That's what the Bible says. You, there are two different things. You hear and you open. He said, I'm knocking the doors. The door. If any man we open, it's, it's not you that we force him inside. Your own business is just to open your heart to him. And he said, I will enter and I will come in to feast with you. Oh, how beautiful it is for God to feast with a man. In the church of God, when you read your Bible, when you listen to God speak to you in Sunday school, you read your Bible, you hear someone, you hear this and that, and God speaks to you. I have always been telling you, when what you hear is something that is humanly difficult for you to obey, it is still God that will help you to obey it. You cry to him now. Jesus was confronted with very hard situation to, of co confronting death in the garden of Gestimal. Jesus cried, oh my father, how I wish this cup will pass over me, but not my will, but your will be done. Jesus prayed in the garden of Gestimal, then he overcame, the, he overcame his humanity. I don't want to call it flesh. He overcame his humanity and divinity took over the powers or overpowered the, the, the humanity. And Jesus was able to face the cross. We will all find ourselves at crossroads at one time or the other. When it becomes difficult for us, humanly speaking, to obey divine injunctions, we can cry to God to help us. You are not super. You are not. You are not. You are not. Uh, you are not there yet. We are not growing. We are growing. We are growing. As we go with Him, we grow up. We grow deep. That's what God wants for us. Do not add in your heart. The only thing you just need to do is to say, God, I know this is your word, but humanly speaking, it is difficult for me. Please help me. And he helps people. For the Bible says he's the one who works and us both to do and to will of his good player. Put your hands together for him. He's the one. He's the one who will give you something to do. He's the one who will help you to do that something. What else do you want from him? Except if you say, no, 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 no. If you're adding your heart, God cannot help anybody who has had in his heart. Except that person prays. And number three, I want to round up very soon. Number three, leave the multitudes behind. Leave the crowd behind. The Bible says in Mark chapter 4, verse 36. Mark 4, 36, leaving the crowd behind. Leaving the crowd behind. The disciples of Jesus, after they have listened to him, after they had hearkened to his voice by setting out, 
the third thing they did was to leave the crowd or the multitudes behind. It shows that the people that were there at that time were not, all of them were not the disciples of Jesus. There were those who were there because of the miracles they will receive from Jesus. Those who were there because of food, because they have heard that Jesus can turn things around and make people to be eating every day, even without them working. And they had forgotten that Jesus himself said, I see my father work and I work. So Jesus was a worker and he's still a worker. The only thing he's doing now, the only work he's working now is the work of intercession. Sitting at the right hand side of God, interceding for the saints. So some people were there who didn't really have any business about listening to him. I mean, walking with him, moving to the other side, advancing spiritually. They were just there for pleasure. They were just here for sightseeing. They were just here for whatever business. What did the disciples do? The Bible says they left those people behind. If you are going to go deep and go with the Lord and grow with the Lord this year, may I tell you that you've got to leave the multitudes behind. Why? Do you need to leave the multitude behind because the multitude will teach you the attitude that will hinder your altitude because the multitude will teach you the attitude that will hinder your altitude the multitude the crowd don't really have anything beautiful or positive to add to your destiny in moving with God. Jesus, God wanted to do something beautiful with the life of a man called Abraham. Abraham. A-B-R-A-M. And in Genesis chapter 12, God had spoken to Abraham before, come out of your father's house and come to the land that I will show you. Anytime God wants to do business with a man, one of the things he does is to pick the man and take him out of the multitude. Do you know that that is the definition of a church? The church is the called out ones. The church is the called out ones. This is not a church. The gallery, the chairs, the... A church auditorium got burnt in Lagos recently this last week and the roof the chairs musical instruments every goddamn thing in that church got burnt but it wasn't the church that got burnt because the pastor said yes all these things were burnt but we still continue in worshipping the Lord it means the church was still alive even after the auditorium got burnt Several auditoria of churches in the northern part of this nation, the northeast, northern part, northwest, and all that, got burnt anytime they had problems with all these jihadists and all that. But the church is still waxing stronger. So the church is a called out once. People who have been called out of the world, people who have been called out unto him. Those who have been called to separate themselves from God. That's the church. That's where you belong. That's who you are. And we must live with the consciousness of that. Anyone who wants to grow with God and grow deep must understand that if you dwell with the multitudes or the crowd, your attitude cannot be in tandem or supportive of what God wants to do in your life. The Bible says they left the multitudes behind. He left them behind and having left them behind they went with the Lord we're going to move to that one soon because they knew that the multitudes or the crowds will ensnare them they know that or knew that the multitude or the crowd will disturb them they bring disturbance what are we talking about by leaving the multitude behind don't move with those who are not going to where you are going to don't enter a wrong bus Don't enter a wrong bus. That's why when you get to the park, you hear Lagos, 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 Ibadan, Lagos, Ibadan, Lagos, Ibadan, and you are going to Polakot. 
And you are here in Lagos, Ibadan, Lagos, Ibadan, and you are adding your voice. Are you here in Lagos, Ibadan, Lagos, Ibadan? What's this man saying? I bet don't disturb me. I'm already inside the bus. And you sit down. And the bus is facing Aramoko. And you are saying, when are we going to arrive at Port Court? Ah. And time has gone. And the bus is, ah, 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 ah. The bus is approaching Elisha. The bus is approaching Ibadan. And you are going to Port Court. And this one is going this way. And you are seeing a repo. And you still think you are going to Father God. You are inside the wrong bus. You are following those who are not going to the place you are going. I am going to emphasize this more next week Sunday by the grace of God. We are not done with this leaving the multitude behind because it's a big deal. It's a big point. There are some things we need to know. There are some things we need to understand so that you will know that just like Rick Warren said, Christianity is personal. No, it is not private. It is personal. If you have a friend in church who is not godly, you are at liberty not to copy that friend. If you have a friend who is a rebel anywhere, if you have a friend who is not helping your spiritual life, who is not adding value to your spiritual life, you are at liberty not to fight with the person but to separate with anyone who is not helping you to go to where you are going to. Jesus said you are in the world but you are not of the world. Leaving the multitudes behind will make you to move with the master because he cannot move with the multitude. That's why Jesus will always have those he has called to be with him so that he might send them. God wants to send some of us into politics. God wants to send some of us into medical profession. God wants to send some of us into the ministry of the church. God wants to send some of us into engineering field. God wants to send some of us to Paris. God wants to send some of us to America. God wants to send some of us to Germany, to every part of the world. But you cannot be fruitful if you go to places like that if he has not separated you unto himself. Bow your head and let us pray. I'd like you to rise on your feet. We're going to take some five minutes to pray. Please place your right hand on your chest. Everyone, please place your right hand on your chest. Thank you. Your right hand on your chest. Thank you. You can drop your Bible for now. As you place your right hand on your chest, I'd like you to have a reflection on the goodness of God to you. What has the Lord done for you? How has the Lord been of help, assistance to you? How have you seen his power? How have you experienced his power? How have you seen his hands? Where have you experienced his hands this year? You are 16 years old. You are 20. You are 25. You are 30. Remember times when it was as if, since you got married, it was as if you would not have a child. But God answered you. Times when that ailment wanted to claim your life, that you even had the revelation that you were dead, but you are still alive today. What has the Lord done for you? And for this, I'd like you to lift up your hand now and say, Lord, I'm grateful. Lord, thank you. Thank you for everything you have done for me. You may wish to sing a song of thanksgiving to God, to appreciate Him for what you have received from Him. Maybe your parents have told you the story behind your birth. And you have seen that, oh, if it is not God, I will not be here. i like you to sing and say, Lord, I'm grateful for everything. That... Forget about what you don't have. Let's thank the Lord for what we have received from him. Lord, I'm grateful, Lord. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I'm, great... I'm grateful for everything. Um... Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 
In Jesus' name, we have given thanks. Please, is it possible for you to still place your right hand on your chest back? Do you want to make a commitment to that God this year? This God who has done you well, do you want to tell him that God, I'm sorry for blocking my ears, my heart to your instructions. But today, as I've heard your voice, I have heard your voice, I have heard your voice. Give me the grace to keep hearing your voice. Help me to be more committed to hearing your voice. Give me the grace to be more intentional about hearing your voice. Hearing your audible voice, hearing your voice in my inner man, hearing your voice through the Bible, hearing your voice through the messages of your word, hearing your voice through Sunday school, hearing your voice through Bible reading, hearing your voice, being intentional about listening to you. Lord, help me. I want to do that. I want to be committed to hearing your voice. And I want to tell you, I want you to tell the Lord, when I hear you, I will not harden my heart. I will hear with my ears. I will open my heart. I will open my heart to you. When it is difficult for me to obey, I will cry to you for help. Because I want to grow deep in you. Lord Jesus, please help me. Lord Jesus, please help me. I will hearken to your voice to be faithful in my tithing. I will hearken to your voice to be faithful in my giving. I will hearken to your voice, O oh Lord, to be a correct child of God. I will represent you well, where you have sent me to be, where you have sent me to go. Where I am now, I will represent you well. Please, Lord, enter into my heart. Send your word to me every day. Could you pray to the Lord finally everything in me around me that is like a weight that is hindering me from acting to your voice from walking with you from moving with you Lord take it away from me any attitude that will not help my altitude anything that is around me anyone that I am in in an unequal relationship with unequal yoke with that will hinder me from running with you Lord Jesus, please today separate me from them. Elisha knew that if he would not concentrate on Elijah, he would not have the double portion of the anointing. And he was always separating himself from the sons of the prophet who were like him. Because he knew that they were not going to the same place. Father, today, teach me separation. Teach me consecration. Let me be able to differentiate between separation and, and consecration. Let me be able to understand who you are more and more as I run this race. You are here, you have not surrendered your life to Jesus. You have not started the journey. You still do some things, you know that you are not a child of God. You are in church or you are following us online. Why don't you commit your heart to Jesus? That route that you are, that you are applying cannot lead you to to a helpful destination why don't you tell the lord to take your heart to take your life today give your life to him surrender your heart to him tell him jesus be in charge of my heart i i, I confess jesus as my lord and savior today i chose intentionally to be born again today jesus save me in jesus name father thank you we have heard your voice and we thank you for this privilege. What you want is not just for us to hear you, but you want us to hearken to your voice. As we have heard your voice, may you help us. May you give us the grace, O oh Lord, our Father, to travel the journey of life with you. The strength to hear you, to hearken to your voice, to leave the multitude behind we receive it in jesus name as we continue next week let your presence remain with us still in jesus name we have prayed